All right, welcome back. We want to solve systems of nonlinear equations. Just as a reminder, in case you didn't watch part one or it's been a while, you know what a system is. You have more than one equation, okay? This is in two variables, so that means you have an x and a y. This is going to be where two graphs intersect each other. Now, when you first learned to solve systems, those two graphs were straight lines. And straight lines can either intersect at one point, they could be parallel, never intersect at all, or they might be the same line where one line lands on right on top of the other and you get a dependent system. Well, when you have nonlinear equations, you might have some kind of crazy curves going on. Like in this case, you have two parabolas. How do I know that? Because I've got an x, I say I have two parabolas, mm -mm, you know what, I've got x squared and y squared. I might have circles here, I might even have hyperbolas, which I know we haven't talked about in this class, but don't stress, we're still just trying to find out where two curves intersect each other, okay? We can do that. One way is by substitution, and I did several problems in part one of this video using substitution as a method. Um... And you could even use substitution here, I think, without not too much grief. But you know what? If you have the same exact variables in both of your equations, solving by elimination might be easier. So what do I mean by that? Look, I've got an x squared here. I've got an x squared here. i got a y squared. i got a y squared. And then I've got constants. So let's solve by elimination. So the goal is to get rid of either the x squareds or the y squareds. Okay, now before we do that, maybe we want to move those constants to the other side. So this will create the system 16x squared minus 4y squared. Let's move that negative 72 over and make it positive 72 on the right side. Second equation, you got x squared minus y squared. Again, key component is to get these variables that match to line up. And this negative 3, let's move it to the other side also. Now it's a little bit easier to look at. Now, if I use the elimination or the addition method right now and I add down, nothing's going to cancel. I would have 17x squared minus 5y squared equals 75. That's not going to help. I've got to get rid of either x squareds or y squareds. It's your choice what you want to do. you got two options. If you want to get rid of the x squareds, we multiply the second equation by negative 16. I think that's a good option. I'm going to go ahead and write it down. So second equation every single bit of that by negative 16. But another option is you could get the y squareds to cancel, and I would multiply the second equation by negative 4. That's probably a better option because the numbers are smaller, but it does not matter. Matter of fact, if you want to pause it and just work on it yourself and try that second option, I promise you we should get the same answer, okay? Now, I'm going to do the first option that I wrote down already, just because I wrote it down already. Okay, 16x squared minus 4y squared is equal to 72. I did not change the first equation. Second equation, negative 16x squared. Negative 16 times a negative y squared is plus 16y squared. And then 16 negative times 3 is negative 48. Now, what am I doing? I'm adding down now. I'm eliminating the x squareds. Negative 4y squared plus 16y squared is 12y squared. And then 72 minus 48, bear with me, I get 24. Now I'm trying to solve for y squared, so I'm going to divide both sides by 12. Does that not give me y squared is equal to 2? And then I take the square root of both sides. Now when you do that, you got to square root this side, square root this side. What else? Plus or minus, right? So I have y is equal to plus or minus the square root of 2. Two separate answers. Okay. Now, remember, my answers are a set of ordered pairs. So right now, I know I have an answer. I don't know what the x is, but my y is negative square root of 2. And then the other answer, I don't know what the x is. My y is positive square root of 2. How am I going to find y? Okay, I mean x, we have y, plus or minus square root of 2. I'm going to go back to either one of my equations and substitute in. Now, I don't know about you, but the second equation looks a little bit more um, conducive 
to plug it in square root of 2. So I'm going to do that. The, the coefficients are smaller. So here we go. I've got x squared. That's what I'm trying to find is x minus y squared. So I got square root of 2 squared minus 3 equals 0. Okay. That gives me x squared minus square root of 2 squared is 2 minus 3 equals 0. Hey, that's minus 5, right? x squared equal, minus, 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 minus 5 equals 0. Gives me x squared equals 5, which gives me x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 5, right? i got to do this again. i got to take the square root of both sides. So square root of this side, square root of this side, and whenever you do that, you must use a plus or minus. So that's where that's coming from. So hold up, wait a minute. So for x equals square root of 2, the second one, I've got two answers associated with that. So I've got negative square root of 5 goes with the square root of 2, and a positive square root of 5 goes with the square root of 2. Wow, right? Okay, okay, we can do this. All right, let's check, in, let's check some more. All right, so I'm going to take my negative square root of 2 and do the same thing. So I've got x squared minus negative square root of 2 squared minus 3 equals 0. Well, when I square negative square root of 2, um, I get 2 again, right? Because when you square a negative, it's positive. When you square the square root of 2, it's 2. So this looks a whole lot like the last one. Is that okay? Mm-hmm. That's, that's because of all these squares, that's what's going to happen. You get x is plus or minus the square root of 5, just like before. So for negative square root of 2, I get positive square root of 5 as one of my answers, and negative square root of 5 as the other answer. Is it okay that we have four different solutions? It is. You could check them. And I'm going to take these four and in my head, plug it into this equation, the one we didn't work with. And if it, if it works for that, I, I'm pretty confident we're, we're doing just fine here. So x squared, that's square root of 5, squared is 5, times 16 is 80. Minus, that's going to be 8, so 80 minus 8 is 72, minus 72 is 0. The first one checked out for me. Now I'm going to do negative square root of 5, negative square root of 2. Now that's not going to make any difference because when you square these negatives, it turns positive. So for instance, negative square root of 5 plugged in right here is the same as positive square root of 5. So 16 times 5 is 80. Negative square root of 2 plugged in right there is going to be positive 2. So 80 minus 8 is 72. Minus 72 is 0. And you could, you could see where these are going to work the same way because of these squares. So those do check out in the other equation. Because of all these squares and these square roots, you, have, you get the plus or minus. So every way possible with positive square root of 5, negative square root of 5, positive square root of 2, negative square root of 2, we've got four answers. It's fun, right? Let's try another one. All right. Holly suggests you pause this thing. Work it out and see if we get the same answer. I know you can do this. I know you can. All right, how'd it go? Right? We either need our X's to cancel or our Y's to cancel. Why am I doing this by elimination or the addition method? Because you have X squareds and Y squareds. They're already even lined up for you. So this is screaming, please use the elimination method. I'm going to get the Y squares to cancel. Why? It does not matter. The x squareds would have been just fine, but they're already opposite signs. So if I multiply this first equation by 3 and the second equation by 4, it works out really nicely. So that's what I'm going to do. So that's going to be 9x squared plus 12y squared is equal to 48. 3 times everything. Second equation is 4 times everything. That's going to be 8x squared minus 12y squared is equal to 20. And then we add down, those dudes cancel. So 17x squared, when I add here, is equal to 68 on the other side. Let's divide both of these by 17 to get the x squared by itself. 
68 divided by 17, I'm going to my calculator, is 4. Now I'm giving you the impression that you always get nice whole numbers when you solve these. That is so not true. It just happens to be the examples that I picked. Didn't even know that was going to happen, but occasionally you do get fractions. Whenever I get fractions, it always makes me a little concerned and I check my work just in case and then if it checks again then I think well it must be a fraction but if I get a whole number I'm like oh I must have done it right but that you know that's not always the case now remember I gotta take the square to both sides what happens when you throw that tool in there yourself you better put a plus or minus or you're gonna miss one of your answers so x is equal to plus or minus 2 right because the square root of 4 is 2 now that's two different results you gotta so let's go ahead and do our, our ordered pair. So you've got 2 comma, we don't know what y is, and negative 2 comma, we don't know what y is. Now is it possible, like the last problem, that we're going to have another pair of pairs to go there? Very possible. So let's plug in positive 2 into either of these equations. Does it matter which? It really doesn't. You might want to stick to the one with the smallest coefficients and the smallest numbers, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to use this second equation right here. So you've got 2 times 2 squared, because we, we know what x is. Minus 3y squared is equal to 5. So 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8. Minus 3y squared is equal to 5. I'm going to subtract the 8 over and get negative 3y squared is equal to negative 3. I divide both sides by negative 3. I get y squared is equal to 1, right? And I take the square root of both sides, and I get y is equal to plus or minus 1. Why? Same old story, right? Plus or minus right there. So what do I find out? That 2 for x is associated with two different y values. So 2 goes with negative 1, but 2 also is associated with positive 1. Now I bet the same thing is going to happen when we go with negative 2. So I'm going to plug it into the second one. 2 times negative 2 squared minus 3y squared is equal to 5. Notice the work is the same. Negative 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8 minus 3y squared is equal to 5. Right? Subtract the 8 over. Negative 3y squared is equal to negative 3. That gives me y is equal to plus or minus 1. So negative 2 is associated with negative 1 and negative 2 is associated with positive 1. So I have four different ordered pairs. That's the solution to this problem. In other words, this is a, pro well, no, again, this is likely a circle, right, well, an ellipse, um, intersected with this ellipse, and they're going to intersect at four different places, or even a hyperbola. I don't, I don't know without graphing it and taking a look at it in more detail. I'm not even concerned about that. I just want you to realize these two graphs intersect each other at four different places. That's what's important. Okay. Now, if you were to graph them, you would see the shapes of these things and that they intersect at these four different places. And y'all, I should say, I'm moving on without checking. Should we check it? Of course we should check it, of course. So you take all four of these points, and you notice I worked with the second equation. I would at least check it with the first equation to make sure I did that right. So let's check 2, negative 1. So 3 times 2 squared is 4. That's 12. Negative 1 squared is 1. 12 plus 4 times 1 is 12 plus 4, which is 16. It checks out. And then you would check all four of them with the first one. And if you're really thorough, you check all four of them with both equations. And I know you know how to do that, so that's why I'm flying on to the next problem. All right, here we go. What in the world do we do with this, y'all? What do we do? What do we do? Pause it. Think about it. Come back, see if you did it right. Notice I ask that which method is best, substitution or addition. Okay, think about it, substitution first. And I, I, well, I did write it first, and I, that means you would have to solve for x squared or y squared and plug it into the other one. Or you would have to, for addition, you would have to get them to cancel out. And honest to goodness, it's about the same either way. So if I thought about it in terms of substitution, I could solve for this x squared right here by subtracting y squared over, and right there, substitute 5 minus y squared. Now what I wouldn't want to do is solve for 
y squared, because there's no y squared down here to substitute it for. Um, and you're thinking, well, yeah, it is, because that's y squared. But you'd have to boil that out, and then you would still have a y in your problem. So if you wanted to substitute for x squareds, it'd be great. If you wanted to substitute for the y's or the y squareds, it wouldn't be so great. It wouldn't work out very well. How could you do the addition method? Well, it's going to work out pretty well, too, if you multiply by say a negative 1 on the top equation and add to the bottom equation, the x squareds will cancel out and then you'll have something very similar to if you substituted. So really either method works fine about the same, but what you cannot do is use substitution for y's or y squareds. That's just, that's not going to work out like you want it to because this doesn't have a single y squared has a y squared and a y in it, or as it is now, it just has y to the second on the outside. So I don't know, what do you want to do? Let's do the addition method. Let's multiply this top equation by negative one, okay? If you're not following, just, just do that and see what happens. So you got negative x squared minus y squared is equal to negative five. So far, so good. Second equation, I'm going to recopy x squared plus y minus 8 squared is equal to 41. Okay, now I know you're thinking this mess right here doesn't look right. It's okay, just, just bear with me. I add down, those cancel. Now I can't literally add these together because they're not really like terms, but what I can do is just write this as negative y squared plus y minus 8 squared is equal to negative 5 plus 41 is what 36 there we go now what how am I gonna solve this this looks awful doesn't it it's a quadratic equation that is not in any kind of standard form it's not at all so factoring it it's not something you want to do from here quadratic formula is not something you can do from here you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna foil out this y minus 8 I gotta foil that out I got two <laughs> blood red. I know it looks awful. I shouldn't have used that color. So here we go. Negative y squared. When I FOIL y minus 8, let me do it tiny right here. This is what I'm doing. y minus 8 times y minus 8. y times y is y squared. y times negative 8 is negative 8y. Negative 8 times y is negative 8y. Negative 8 times negative 8 is plus 64. Y'all know how to do this? I know you do. Look, oh, this is fun. Negative y squared and plus y squared cancel each other out. Is that bad? No, it's wonderful because you don't have this plus or minus business to deal with or two different answers. Looks like we might only get one answer for y. Negative 8y minus 8y is negative 16y. How about let's move that 64 over there. 36 minus 64. What is that? I know, I know. I should know in my head, but I don't do math like that in my head. Okay, minus 28. Uh-oh. There we go, minus 28. Now I divide, divide both sides by negative 16. Are you panicking because it's a fraction? Yeah, me too, just a little bit, but it'll be all right. Okay, first of all, the two negatives cancel. They both divide by 4, don't they? 28 divided by 4 is 7. 16 divided by 4 is 4. So I'm getting that y is equal to 7 fourths in case I made some silly mistake and... Did I? I'm going back to the very beginning and just checking. So when I multiplied everything by negative 1, negative x squared minus y squared is negative 5. That looks good. Did I copy the second one correctly? I did. The x squareds cancel out. Gone. Negative y squared comes down. I rewrite the y minus 8. 41 minus 5 is 36. So far, so good. Did I foil y minus 8 correctly? It should be y squared minus 16y plus 64. I did. The negative y squared and the positive y squared cancel. The negative 8y and the minus 8y is negative 16y plus 64. 36 minus 64. I'm going to check that again. Yep, negative 28. Divide both sides by negative 16. So, unfortunately, I have a fraction. Does it happen? You bet it does. Okay. Now, remember that associated with this y equals 7 fourths, I've got some kind of x value. I have to find it. How am I going to find it? Go back to either one of your equations. I like the very first equation. I'm going to highlight not in blood red this time because that is so bright. Okay, right here. Right there. Plug in 7 fourths. So you've got x squared 
plus 7 fourths squared is equal to 5. That's going to give me x squared plus 7 fourths squared. How do I square that? Top and bottom separately. So numerator squared is 49. Denominator squared is 16 equals 5. What do I do now? Subtract 5 from, I mean, 49 over 16 from 5. Okay, so I'm going to write it out here just so I can do the math in my head. I need to multiply this guy by 16 over 16, which is going to make it 80 over 16. 80 minus 49 gives me 31 over 16. Well, yuck, right? Take the square root of both sides, plus or minus the square root of 31 over 16, which can be simplified to the square root of 31 over 4. I took the square root of 16, and now that square root's only in the numerator. So x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 31 over 4. So my x is going to be negative square root of 31 over 4. And then I have another answer of positive square root of 31 over 4 with a 7 fourths. Is that okay? I don't know. We should check it, right? If I take x squared, negative square root of 31 over 4 and square it, that's going to give me 31 over 16 plus I square my y, 49 over 16, 31 plus 49 is 80 over 16, which simplifies to 5. Hey, it checked with the first one. And then I would check it with the second one also. Okay. I guess before I, I shut this down and move on to the next problem, I should really check it. So let's check it with the second one. So x squared. All right. So that's going right here. That's going to be 31 over 16. I'm even going to write it underneath. So 31 over 16 when I square my x. Plus parentheses, y minus 8, so I'm doing 7 fourths minus 8, and then squaring that, and does that really equal 41? I know, I don't want to do it either. So 31 over 16, okay, 7 fourths minus 8. Well, I need a common denominator. That's 7 fourths minus 32 fourths, right, 32 fourths is 8, yep, 7 fourths minus 32 fourths, 7 minus 32 is what? negative 25 fourths, and then I square it, and 25 squared, I did that wrong, is, I need that, 625 over 16. Is that equal to 41? Now I have to add 31 plus 625 is equal to 656 over 16, 656 divided by 16 is 41. <laughs> yeah, I'm so happy. I'm so very happy. It checks, right? I know it's a pain to check, y'all. I feel it. I feel it too. But you can check all these answers. How awesome is that? How very awesome is that? Okay, so let's do another problem. I got two more. Two more. Just hang with me. <laughs> Application problems. Everybody's favorite. So the difference between the squares of two numbers is five. What does the squares mean? Well, you square it, right? What two numbers you want to use? X and Y. I know that's what you want to use. So the difference, that means subtract between the squares of two numbers. X squared minus Y squared is equal to 5. Right? We got this. Twice the square of the second number subtracted from 3 times the square of the first number is 19. So we got is 19. Well, let's think about this a little bit harder twice the square of the second number. So we're going to do 2y squared subtracted from. That means we put it second. So 2y squared, that's subtracted from 3 times the square of the first number. That's 3x squared. There's our system right there. I can just pause it right now say, hey, you finish it. I know you can finish it. This is a whole lot like the last problem we just did. We just did. But we can do it together. It's okay. We'll do it together. So what do I do? I want my, let's give our x squareds to cancel. So how do I do that? I multiply everything by negative 3, right? So that's going to be negative 3x squared plus 3y squared is equal to negative 15. Second equation, not doing anything to it. 
except recopying it on the sheet. Okay, those cancel. 3y squared plus a negative 2y squared is just y squared. Negative 15 plus 19 is 4. What does that mean y is? Plus or minus 2. Y'all know that, right? So I've got 2 is my y value, and I got negative 2 is my y value. So I've got two different things i got to work on. Now, I've got to plug that back into which equation? Doesn't matter. Okay, you got to check both of them. So I'm going to take my 2, and I'm going to plug it in for my y. So that's x squared minus 2 squared is equal to 5. That's x squared minus 4 is equal to 5. That's x squared is equal to 9. Take the square root of it. That's plus or minus 3, right? I know this is fast because this is stuff you know how to do. All right, so associated with x is equal to 2, I've got two different x values. So negative 3 is one of them, and positive 3 is the other one. Now, I bet something similar is going to happen with that negative 2. What am I doing? I'm taking negative 2, and I'm plugging it in for this y value right here. You could also use the second one if you wanted to. So that's x squared minus negative 2 squared is equal to 5 x squared and negative 2 squared is 4. So these two negatives do not turn into a positive because you've got to do order of operations and square first. So that's minus 4 equals 5. That's x squared is equal to 9. Take the square root of both sides, you get plus or minus 3. So associated with y is equal to negative 2, I have a negative 3 result, but I also have a positive 3 result. And this is one of those situations where we have four answers. I bet you can check that on your own to save you lots of time. I'm going to let you do that. Last question. Find the length and width of a rectangle whose perimeter is 36 feet and whose area is 77 square feet. First of all, rectangles, right? This dude right here. There's your rectangle. Okay. Perimeter. What does that mean? You add all the sides. Add all the sides together. Area, what does that mean? Length times width. This is just in my own words, okay? And hey, that's a great place to start if you're overwhelmed by a word problem. But now, we've got to have some variables in here, right? So what's up with a rectangle? Well, we know that these two top and bottom sides are the same. Why don't we call those x if you want to? x and x. Or L and L, if that makes you feel better, for length. And these two, we could call them width, or I'm just going to call them Y and Y, because I'm used to working with X's and Y's, but it doesn't matter. So if I add all the sides, that means perimeter is 2X's plus 2Y, or 2L plus 2W, if you want to use different variables. Okay? Area is length times width, where our length, we called it X, and our width, we called it Y. And, and I was going to say, boom, that's our system, but I didn't plug in the values. It says, find the length of a rectangle whose perimeter is 36 feet. So this is 36 feet, and whose area is 77 square feet, so that is 77. Now we have a system. I'm going to write it at the top of the page. So 36 is 2x plus 2y, and 77 is equal to x times y. I know you're used to reading it the other way, and that's perfectly fine. Now, check it out. The variables in the top equation of our system are just separately x and y. The variable or the term in the bottom is x times y, okay? So we can't add down anything and get anything to cancel. So this is one of those where I have to solve this guy right here for x or y, Okay, so I'm going to write it over here. 77 is equal to xy. I need to get one of these by itself. I'm just going to divide both sides by y, and that's going to give me the x by itself. So we know that x, I'm switching sides on you, equals 77 over y. What am I going to do with that? I'm going to take that and plug it in for this x right here. So 36 is equal to 2 times remove the x and replace it with what x is 77 over y plus 2y now we know we cannot solve an equation with a y in the denominator so what i'm going to do is two things i'm going to multiply this 2 times 77 together okay and i'm also going to multiply everything the whole thing by y 
Why am I doing that? To get that y out of the denominator. So this is 36y equals, now 2 times 77 is 154. Yes, I used my calculator to do that. So 154. Now this y cancels with this y. Plus, remember, I'm multiplying everything times y. So this y times 2y is 2y squared. Mm, we've got a quadratic equation, don't we? Whew, okay, so I want this thing equal to 0. The y squared is already positive. I'm going to switch sides on you. So on the left, I'm going to write 2y squared. I'm going to subtract the 36y over, which makes it negative 36y. And then I have a plus 154 equals 0. Now imagine I did two things to you at the same time. I move that 36y over. So it gives me 154 minus 36y plus 2y squared. And then I just switch sides so it looks better. Now what's awesome about this is that 2 factors out. So 2 factors out. That gives me y squared minus 18y. And half of 154 it should be 77 because we just did that a minute ago, but I'm going to check it anyway. Yeah, 77. So plus 77 equals 0. Are there numbers that multiply to be 77 and add to be 18? Sure are. 7 and 11. So 2 times y minus 7 times y minus 11 equals 0. So I set each one of these three factors separately equal to 0. I can't set 2 equal to 0, but I can set y minus 7 equals 0. It gives me 7. I can set y minus 11 equals 0. That gives me 11, right? All right, so I have two answers, but I have to find the x's associated with those two answers. So I have something comma 7 and I have something comma 11. How am I going to do that? Well, you use one of those equations in your system. I like the second equation right up here. I'm going to highlight it in some cute color like green. Okay, this is what I'm using right here. I could use the first one too if I want to. I just like the second one because there's a little bit less to it. So my y is 7. Okay, so I have 77 is equal to x times 7. What's x? 11, right? Because I divide both sides by 7 and get x is 11. Okay. And then I let x be 11. Actually, y be 11. So 77 is equal to x times 11. What's x in this case? Well, 7. It's just the opposite one. So it says find the length and width of a rectangle whose perimeter is 36 feet and whose area is 77 feet. So really, it depends on which one you call width and which one you call length. So, you know, they could be 7 and 11, and, and that's it. So width could be 7, length could be 7, width could be 11, length could be 11. They're just associated that way. So... I'm at this point not certain if you would need, I think you would need to type both answers in though. 11 comma 7 and 7 comma 11, they both work. We know if we multiply them together, we get 77. We know if we checked it here, 2 times 7 is 14 plus 2 times 11 is 22. So 14 plus 22 is 36. Yep. Or 2 times 11 is 22 plus 2 times 7 is 14. Again, 22 plus 14 is 36. So they both work. All right, that's my last problem. Let me know if you have any questions. I hope you have a wonderful day.